community center progress since our our last committee meeting uh hvac commissioning has been completed uh talk course paving vfw seal coating and striping is done uh, exterior painting is done except for punch list uh, landscaping is nearly done uh, they've still got some left to do uh, exterior signage has been installed uh, except for some uh, signage that we're adding by change order. Uh, fencing is is complete except for our three gates. Um, essentially, they've demobilized from the site. The dumpster's gone. I think well, as of Saturday, they had one porta john still there. Um, AO has started to move his equipment out. Uh, he had a couple pieces over at Holy Angels. <clears throat> but they've cleaned up the site uh, quite a bit. Um, the motorized shades were installed. The telephone intrusion and AV systems <clears throat> have been installed. Uh, punch list has been ongoing by Hutter and uh, the subcontractors. Uh, FF and E FF and E is nearly complete. There's some outstanding items to be delivered and some damaged items that need to be replaced. Uh, the library move in started on the 19th. Uh, ESS move in started on the 27th. Um, the children's book parade and open house was held this past Saturday, uh, as Paul mentioned, and um, the community center was open for business officially uh, yesterday. Uh, schedule look ahead uh, right now we're, we're working on an extended uh, temporary certificate of occupancy so we'll be looking for issuance of the final certificate of uh, occupancy and and issuance of the certificate of substantial completion <clears throat> which we have uh, in process and uh, is dated for the uh, uh, dated as of uh, April 7th uh, the repaving at Milford Street um had to uh ha has to happen that could not could not be done before april i talked with dennis and uh dennis westgate and uh la france is planning on doing that uh, uh most likely this month um completion of the punch lists um some minor item connections of <clears throat> the rain barrel outside um the exterior building signage changes uh, the three uh, gates for the fencing, uh, completion of the landscaping, the FF and E punch list, uh, the generator. Um, we did get, we did hear back that the generator has shipped and it should be showing up this week. So Mercer Electric will be out uh, to set the generator, wire it, and Irvine will will have to um, uh, connect the the gas to it. Then they'll do uh, a load test and take the temporary generator out and um, will be complete as far as uh, the temporary power and emergency power needs. Uh, training, some training has has occurred, but there's still more to be done. And then uh, O&Ms as built and close out documentation. Some other issues um, that have come up, uh, we spoke be, uh, previously of the incentives which are being um, uh, pursued by uh, Tarowski II. Um, again, uh, certificate of substantial completion. Uh, it's dated 4-7. Uh, that means the building is occupiable. The utility costs are transferred to the owner and insurance also goes to the owner, which has already happened. Um, the ESS large program room tables, there was a contract amendment issued for the change in tables. Um, uh, which uh, we are, I don't think we have a delivery date as of uh, as of this time, but uh, that has been uh, that has been issued. Uh, the VFW seal coating and striping. Um, there is a there is an issue with um, the circle around that should say VFW, um, which was not included in the general contractor's scope of work. Um, the seal coating line stopped at the uh, the main parking lot um, and that uh, seal coating around the uh, 
the circle will likely be done by the DPW under a blanket purchase uh, agreement that they have. Uh, paving, uh, DPW does have some issues with the top course paving. Uh, we've uh, requested uh, documentation uh, th from the paver, which was a subcontractor to AO and, and Hutter. Um, it may be an issue with using the wrong mix and or uh, they let the uh, the mix get cold before they, they rolled it. Um, so we're probably also going to be taking some core samples with Yankee uh, engineering and testing. Uh, to ensure that the, the density is proper or not. And then um, there will be some kind of meeting that will include uh, uh, Dennis Westgate from the DPW. Uh, sort of a shortened schedule now. Um, the generator, expect again, expecting delivery this week. So the install will probably go through the month of May. Um, the library and the ESS opening was the first, and the dedication is still scheduled for June 14th. So uh, photo documentation uh, since our last meeting, uh, we did get another round of aerial uh, views from um, Tom Sleeper. That's uh, that's one of one of the aerial view shots. I believe he did that on. I think that was Friday afternoon because the uh, and the striping the striping isn't there yet, so it was sometime before six o'clock on Friday. Uh, next view is uh, simply the chil uh, the children's area of the library. As you can see, furniture's in, books are in. Um, it's the the library shelving stack area. Uh, we have a few views of that. Shelves are, are mostly full of books, and this is uh, this is from the um, the quiet room corner uh, facing into the uh, to the stack area, and that's uh, facing in from the ESS reception desk. Uh, this photo is a large program room. We did have a change in some of the um, uh, coloring on the uh, accent. Uh, sections of the linoleum. There was some green panels and I think this was one and there may have been one over here that were were incorrect and were replaced by the flooring guy. Um, came out came out quite well. And then just some examples of the of the landscaping around the building. I said there they didn't they didn't quite finish on Friday. Um, so they've got they have things to do plus they they have their maintenance um they did hydro seed friday afternoon see it right along here this is this is at the service entrance area and then the um the mulch and the and the the, the bushes and plantings around the uh the rear patio at the uh at the west side of the building And this was uh, uh, Saturday afternoon, just a, sort of an overview from the attic window of the uh, parking lot with the uh, the new paving line is right about here, and then the seal coating is out here. And it the the issue at hand is the seal coating that goes around the building here, this circle. Pete also was brought up to my attention that the um, <clears throat> If you go back to it uh, to the right, if you went back to the other picture you had, yep. There you go. It's the first telephone pole in the corner. Keep going up to your right, a little further. Okay. Yeah, that one between there and the other telephone pole is there's a one parking spot that's parallel. Is that is that was that supposed to be like that? You said there's one parking spot that's parallel. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. You don't pull in. You, you, you back. You know. You, yeah, it's, I think it's right in here, up against the the ball field. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, right in that area. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's correct. Because there's there's some cross hatching area in there. Right. Yeah, that was that was per plan. Thank you. Yep. And that's just uh, 
another section of the uh, of the lot. Really? And then on Saturday, oh, Steve, oh, sorry, can you go back to that landscape photo and, and show us where the car charging thing is? Oh, right. it's it's right here. Yeah. Okay. So that was it, the, the box I saw on the ground. Yep. Yeah. It. Yeah, the, it, it's on, it's right next to a light bulb and it's got its own base. It's there's a gray weatherproof box there in a crosshatch island. That that's the uh that's a, the future charging station. Okay, so uh we're gonna put volumes there or are we gonna anything to protect that charging station when it's installed or are we just gonna well that 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 base that base is out of the ground a little bit. Um it's got a plastic box on it. Yeah, well, at at some point, the uh, there'll be a charging station on it that will replace that box. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm just saying, shouldn't there be a ball a ball in on either side of that plastic box so someone doesn't drive over the box? Well, they're going to drive into the, the light bulb. Charging station. It's very close to the light bulb. It is not going to the light bulb. Well, the, the, the charging station will sit up next to the light bulb. Understood, but until we actually put the charging station in, that box is going to get replaced about seven times. Yeah. Put a bonus. <laughs> That's, we can put a bonus up there right then. Yeah, I would I would expect to see a ball in, after the charging station's installed. You'd want something to protect the actual charging station. I don't know. And and while we're, it's all fresh in our minds, we should have an idea where to where to put that bullet so that we don't hit the electrical conduit feeding the charging station. Well, we know where the conduit is. It it, it basically comes. Uh, you you don't want to be on the building side of that um, uh, that that uh, char future charging station because that's the conduit's right there. So right. if you're gonna if you're gonna put a bullet, it, it can only be on on. It would, uh, that, that one side. Light pole, the light pole would protect it from one side, and that would protect it from the other side. I, I honestly think it, 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 we, we should just put it in now, or I'll just go buy another plastic box because I think I'm going to make it weak. You just put a cone over the plastic box for now. You, the, you're putting the ball in, and now you're, uh, Take up the asphalt. Now, you're breaking up, now you're breaking up the asphalt. And you're, well, you're maybe that's what you want to force him. Well, I don't know. The course sample has to be taken in certain places that are here to be worse than others. So you just can't. I don't know. I don't know if you were over there. There's three or four places that there's a lot of popcorn. Yeah, that, that's fine. But I, I, honestly, the, the protection of that box and that conduit should be done. There's no way that thing's going to make it through the week. Sitting eight inches off the ground. Okay, well, just, I mean, just just so that we're clear that there is no baller that's included in the contract now for for Hutter to put in. So this would be, this would be a change. This would be cutting, cutting the asphalt, excavating for the base and, uh, you know, putting the concrete base in, putting the baller in. I don't, you know, I don't know if we want to have Hutter do that or not at this point. Give it a chance to see see what happens there. We'll, we'll have to we'll, ha we'll have to look yeah. at it. There may, there may be there's some other way of doing it. I don't know. You know this. We'll look at. I mean, unfortunately, that's not concrete around there, so you can't get a bolt on. Um, bollard. It's 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 asphalt. No, no. You'd have, you'd have to you just have to do some kind of concrete work, and the you know, the parking lot. Right now has been no, complete no, no, for a couple of days. The issue is the box, right? Right now, but if, when you put the 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 four thousand dollar charging station, then, that, then that's going to be my issue. All right. Well, well for the time box. being, we'll put a we'll get a cone and put the cone on the box. I guess, guys, be better off. <laughs> we don't need electric guys. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Sorry. I mean, you know, it, it, you know, the Tarowskis, anybody want to weigh in on this as the designers? No, I'll just look okay. at it. I don't, I don't, I don't have anything to say at this moment. We can look. Moving on. Um, Saturday, they had the children's book parade from the old to the new library. I'll just go through this very quickly. 
wrap this up. And there's open house, there's use of the playground. Moving on to the budget, um, the budget, uh, the contingent uh, construction con contingency needs to be updated. We have a number of small change orders that have occurred in the last couple of weeks. Those have to be ironed out, so we have to do a, a budget reevaluation. Uh, proposed change orders, there's been 102 PCOs submitted to date. Uh, T2 is going to go over change order 12 after this. Um, any questions before I get into invoices? Okay. Uh, because the meeting is so early in the month, the Hutter, Vertex, and Tarowski invoices were not, not ready, so we'll be having a meeting in two weeks. It'll be a short meeting for those invoices. Um, Fitzmyer and Tachi commissioning. Uh, they have an uh, an invoice for uh, 49433 in the amount of $6,591.75 for commissioning in April. That all goes to capital. And then a second invoice, 49. 482 for $433.44, which is reimbursables. That's also capital. Um, creative Office Resources, invoice 213016, the amount of the approved amount of $41,806.01. The invoice was for $49,183.54. But Stifera, who is the, the furniture designer, has approved 85% of that invoice until punch list is complete and done, which it isn't yet. Signs Plus, invoice 59785 in the amount of $175. That was uh, for the playground closed banner. So there's a subtotal on this page of $49,006.20. Uh, we do have a second page. Uh, Creative Office Resources Invoice 214131. It's for $995. That's for furniture storage beyond the, the uh, original delivery date. Uh, Robert H. Ward Company. It's two invoices, 34869. For the approved amount of five thousand four hundred thirty-one dollars and thirty cents, again, Stifera approved eighty-five percent of a six thousand three hundred eighty-nine dollars and seventy-six cents uh, invoice. They also have invoice three four eight six nine dash one for two hundred seventy-five dollars. That's for furniture storage. Uh, Tucker Library Interiors invoice nine three five three. An approved amount of $82,345.92 on a invoice of $96,877.55. They had sent in a, a, a billing for 100% well before they were actually done. And there's still items that need to be delivered, although it's, it's minor at this point. But they still have shelving that needs to be installed or shelving pieces. Uh, National Library Relocations, invoice 009052 for $9,836. That's for That was the mover for the library materials. Uh, COA had their own mover, which we don't have the invoice yet. Uh, Wally Computer Associates, invoice F98252 for $26,545. That's for computer network uh, materials and, and labor. And uh, W.B. Mason, uh, invoice 2374457300, uh, an approved amount of $135,592.85 on a original invoice of 159.521, with 85% approved by Stifura. Uh, so the total for both pages is 
$27.27. There are a number of other invoices that just haven't come in yet. WB Mason has three other contracts that they haven't billed on. Uh, Creative Office Resources has two others. Um, Total Fitness hasn't sent their invoice yet. So these are the ones that, that we've collected over the last month and a half. So we're, we, we, these should be processed and others will be coming in maybe for, for the meeting in two weeks. And that that's it. So I I, I, I guess I would ask now for a uh, a vote on the invoices. All of this, this is all related to the the capital, not as opposed to the claim. Uh, David, all all capital. All right, Steve, you want who, who wants it? Um, I'll move that we approve the invoices. Uh, the vertex presentation in the amount of three hundred ten thousand twenty seven dollars and twenty seven cents. And second. Anybody have any question on them? I guess library movements come pretty expensive. Huh? No. Every hand, no questions. All flarity I. Be right tonight. D heck already. I can't lie. You're on mute. You're mute, Don. Frozen. I saw his, I saw his slips move, so we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll I'll go with it. He said yes. yes. <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll uh, say that by the end of the section. I got a feeling he'll be coming off the screen and coming back on. Probably. <laughs> um, Is that it for you, Steve? That's it until we get into something else. All right. Peter? I'm going to let Chris run through uh, change order 12 and other pending change orders. Okay. All right, everybody can uh, see, see the screen and hear me? Yes. Yeah. All righty. I wonder why we have the other here. Uh, He's on Chris's screen. Oh. We can just see your, we can see oh. your team. There we go. All right. Uh, so this presentation is for change order 12 to date um, and the pending PRs um, that we're still awaiting pricing that'll most likely go on the next change order um, that we haven't received from Hutter yet. So change order 12 to start, these are the four PCOs that we've kind of already gone over, reviewed um, at probably about a month and a half ago or two months ago at this point, but we've just been kind of keeping an ongoing change order 12. So again, the signage lettering change um, to add those, the public library sign and senior center, the non-conforming sprinkler heads, the hands-free hand wash sink, and the playground signage post labor, um, which all of them, except for PCO 86 have been done. Um, I don't believe the playground signage post has been put in, but either which way the labor has come back for us. Um, next is um, still all keeping it on change order 12. These um, the items in green indicate um, changes that we approved um, the actual changes in doing them and they've, they've actually done the work, um, but we didn't have um, a price. We just thought that the you know, the changes were relatively small, so um, a lot of them we just told them to push forward on. Um, some of them were recommendations from the town commissioner. Um, those include PCO 88, which is the roll up door finish. So this was adding some millwork and some paint above the roll up door. Came to 80960. Uh, PCO 90 was adding a grommet to the COA reception, uh, was 8250. PCO 91 was adding some door stops and bumpers that uh, Matthew and, and Libby had walked around and um, added a few more to some doors that um, we felt we wanted to, you know, add those things to. That came to $410.05. Uh, PCO 92 was the kitchen outlet relocation. So both outlets got relocated. Um, to much more usable locations um, above the counter. Uh, that came to 90, uh, $978.11. Uh, 
PCO 95 was the adult lounge finish changes. So that was painting the inside of the closet the same color as the yellow that's in the adult lounge, as well as adding a additional piece of millwork um, to underneath the window to align all of the um, casework under or the chair rail, sorry, um, in that area. Uh, that came to 997.43. PCO 96 was painting in the open clause of the COA office. This hasn't been done, um, but we had talked about it in the last meeting. Uh, we got a price back for 576.13, which is quite a bit. Um, so I'm thinking that they actually included that price for both closets. I have to kind of go back and, and, and look at that, but. Um, that's for that change. Uh, PCO 99 is the um, is the commissioner signage changes. So that was adding uh, additional occupancy signs, then um, changing a couple of the signs that um, were already printed and done for a few of the offices for the social services office and the um, COA director office. So changing those signs out came to 131206. Um, the next slide is all the changes that have been added and they haven't they weren't reviewed in the last meeting um, for price or for the changes. So these are all kind of brand new. Um, that's the PCO for the VFW pavement patching. That's additional pavement marked out by Vertex to be patched um, on the VFW side. Um, that's for thirty seven hundred dollars. PCO 94 uh, bathroom partition extension. I'll get into that at, a, at the slide lower than that, but it's pretty much when you go into the COA men's bathroom, um, you know, it's there's a straight shot at a certain angle um, right at the urinal. So what we did is we just asked them to, you know, go as far out with that partition wall as they could um, while also maintaining um, ADA clearances and everything like that. So that um, extension came to 127380. And I believe Hutter said that they were doing that work they did this, that yesterday. This week, I was going to say, yeah, it should have been either yesterday or today. So. They did No, they did it yesterday. I was there when they were doing it. Awesome. Uh, PCO 97 is adding a cold line to the dishwasher. So just quickly, you know, with this, and I know Paul and Steve have been kind of involved with this as well. But so uh, right now, as it stands, there's a, a rough line for adding um, a cold line to the dishwasher, so it's already roughed in. Um, however, it wasn't on the drawing, so essentially what they're doing is they're adding the cost of putting that roughing in as well as holding it um, to to attach it to the dishwasher. Um, so this is one that, again, is, is is ongoing to us. It's It's not exactly a change. It came through an RFI. So we're still kind of reviewing this price and, and, and going through and making sure that this is actually um, something that it's been, it's been done for us. Should right, OK, so so it got attached now. I think it also required a backflow preventer, if I remember correctly. I think it's there. Yeah, it, it's done. The work's done. Yeah. OK, all right. So again, we'll have to review the price as to you know how how we all came to that, but um, PCO 98 uh, signage lettering uh, number nine. This is to add three number nines to the outside of the building, one at the entry, one at the COA entry, and then one at the front of the building on the north side on the 140 side. Um, PCO 100 is the window shade fabric change. So essentially what happened is during bid, um, we had specified a certain um, fire rated fabric um, that was passable by mass um, um, code or the fire code for mass NFPA. Um, as we went through the design and it was about to be ordered, Hutter had brought up um, the fact that that um, particular fabric wasn't going to meet the NFPA code for mass fire code. Um, so they had suggested that we just move um, to one that will actually meet that. Um, in talking with Draper, who's the manufacturer of the curtains, they had in fact said that this the, the price that you guys are seeing is is in fact fair for the upgrade to that um, new type of cloth and that it's you know out of Hutter's hands essentially because um, the code was changed after um, after the bid time. Um, so that's the additional money for the, the newer curtains. 
Uh, PCO 101 is the wall laminate change for 44506. That's the additional laminate, and I will show that on the next slide. That was um, right at the library reception area. Uh, and then PCO 102 is a credit uh, for the back charges for February and March's gas bills. Uh, that came out to 1060.56. Um, going back, so the bathroom partition again, just graphically so you guys can see what we're talking about here is you're looking at the men's uh, COA bathroom. And what you're looking at here is this little highlighted area here um, is going to be what we extend it to with a little pole that goes that gets drilled into the tile. You can kind of see that pole here and then it attaches back to the already existing um, supports on the, the existing water closet. Um, and that was done from what I hear yesterday. The other change that I had mentioned um, that was more on on the design side was the additional laminate that was placed on the librarian's um, reception side. Uh, this was just for damage control, essentially, that this this area that you're seeing is highlighted would just be open wall to the low end. And, and I think Matthew had intended to do some storage over there, so we wanted to make sure um, there was a protective surface that the wall wasn't going to keep on getting damaged and dinged. Um, it's so not that ahead. color. It's not that. It's not that color. That's that's <laughs> highlight. <laughs> that, that's a highlight. It matches the colors around the building. Um, so Great. in total, brown. So same brown. color as the floor in the entryway. Yeah. <laughs> So in total, uh, all the, P the PCOs from, like I said, probably accumulatively the last month and a half, two months, um, the four in blue again are um, indicate approved changes in prices at previous BC meetings. The ones in green again indicate change approved at previous BC meetings, but not the price um, or we didn't have the price at that point. Um, and then the red indicates changes um, nor price has been reviewed in, in previous BC meetings. So these are all kind of uh, newer ads. Um, all of the changes and all of these PCOs all total a not to exceed amount of $16,894.14. Um, one that is not shown, but is right now being taken into consideration for either change order 12, depending on the vote and depending on us, again, trying to reduce some of these prices um, that were we're going through and review um, is also the end grid back charges for the months of February and March. So we have the PCO 102 for the February March gas bill back charges. We also should be getting um, the back charges for the power from end grid. So we just we haven't received that yet, but the, t the town does not have those those uh, interestingly enough. They don't have bills yet from national grid. Don't know why, but I asked Sandy and she said no, had, re had received none to date. So, so okay. we'll probably go on 13. Yep. So that's how I figured is, is it'll probably wind up going on change order 13. But again, the not to not to exceed amount. The the ones in red are really the ones that were still in the process of reviewing the prices and and going through that. But the not to exceed amount would be 16,894.14. So, I guess I would ask for approval um, or request for approval. Um, for the summary of change order 12 at, as it stands for that not to, not to exceed amount. Anybody have any questions about what he's just talked about? Steve Rackett and I are um, familiar with this, but either the rest of you gentlemen have any questions, uh, feel free. The hands free, the PCO 85 was uh, that was my doing. Yeah, no, we, we discussed all that stuff. Yeah, the, the, the other stuff all seems legitimate to me. I mean, yeah, we could check on that one paint in that open closet and see a COA office. Other than that, yeah. I mean, everything else seems in, in price. Range where I would expect to see him. Matthew, help me out. Where, where where's this closet in the COA? Down that down the in their staff hallway. What they did, stuff they did the one in the in the lounge. 
I'm with Chris. He probably they probably th we may think it's it just got missed when it was in, in, in that other change order for the, the change in the color. And we just if it gets painted, it gets painted. If it right. doesn't, Mark Part of it was how I put the change orders through because I essentially, you know, PCO 95 is adult lounge finish changes. So when I did that, it included both millwork and painting prices. So I think the painters were out there that day and Todd uh, the, from Hutter had, had kind of just told them, hey, just paint this closet yellow right now. That's what they want. That, so that, I, I think it was kind of just a matter of timing um, and, and how they they went and put it on the PCOs. So. Um, I'm just I want to go back and double check and make sure that essentially, we're, you know, that it's not getting double charged or double billed and, and, and where that, um, you know, right. making, making sure that the money, you know, follows the actual work. Right. So that's the not to exceed number. Yeah, I'm comfortable right. with everything. All right. All right. So um, make a motion to approve um, the PCOs and change order 12. For a not to exceed amount of sixteen thousand eight ninety four and fourteen cents. I second. More discussion. We've been pretty clear so far. Roll call vote. Paul Flaherty, aye. Steve Rackerton, aye. D Heckler, aye. Mike Howell, aye. Don Spargo, aye. And be, and before you change just the screen, Chris. Yeah. Uh, well, the February March gas bill. Was only a thousand bucks. Did we really heat the whole place for a thousand bucks in two months? Um, I'd have to. I, I believe he provided the backup for it. Um, we got we got the invoices from Sandy. Yeah. March was seven hundred and seventy four dollars, uh, and the February, which you know was a was a partial. Okay, uh, this, yeah. this is this is on the new meter. You know what I mean? Not they were temp temp heating themselves using propane. So okay. this February was maybe like a week. It was three hundred and something. Okay, thank you. I I, I saw the seven hundred one and all that. So yeah, we, we right. have those numbers. Yep. So they unanimous action. The next item is um, okay. you know Stephen off my screen. No, he he's got thirteen to go over. I got yeah, I got a, oh, a couple more, a couple more slides, guys. Bear with me. <laughs> all uh, right, Chris. So. A couple more slides for change order 13. So these are the ones that we're awaiting prices for. So again, to expedite for Hutter, he had asked me to, um, you know, kind of put a, a couple of the changes that we had discussed in design meetings all in one, um, all in one PR. So that is to add a dummy handle, um, at, you know, on, on the front vestibule essentially. So um, it's able to remain unlocked and people can still get into the vestibule um, for now. Uh, Number two is add switch to dogging hardware for ED1, ED2, and EC1. So those three doors are the doors at the west side of the building um, out of the, the adult lounge. Um, so onto that back patio and down to the, the, the sloped walk, that's EC1. Um, ED2 and ED1 are the doors on the children's area side. So leaving the children's library area and then leaving the small group room or the classroom. Um, Currently, right now, they are they were looked at and designed as just egress doors, so they were only able to be walked out of, and they automatically lock. And then from the outside, you can only use a master key or only well, really only the master key um, to get back in that door. So there came up an issue that you know if somebody needed to get into those spaces but didn't have someone that had a master key. Um, and they wanted to leave those doors essentially unlocked so people could go in and out of those those rooms. Um, this hardware change would allow for um, those doors to to essentially remain locked with with some kind of a dog hole in the hardware. And what that is is essentially again just to kind of go over is just the what what we priced for is the Allen key um, dogging that you it's a little hole that's in the little push bar of um, the door hardware that you stick a Allen key in and it essentially holds the door unlocked. Um, so number three, um, so again, I, I broke down. Mike, Mike, Mike is looking with consternation here. Yeah, so how yeah. do we know, so somebody does tap to the door and then nobody undoes it and it's unlocked for the entire weekend. This was This was something brought up um as user discretion again i guess you know 
I, that, I think that's originally why, again, the doors were designed as they were for just egress. Um, however, you know, um, since it's right outside of that playground area, I think was the the idea is when there's events and things like that, people can go through those spaces and they don't have to go around the front of the building um, to use the bathroom, for example, or things like that. But to your point, Mike, you know, that that is very much a possibility. You know, if someone were to forget, you know, dogging that open, um, you could run into that. But it's just going to have to be part of the policy of shutting down the building. To, right. to be alarmed. Be I will throw in for discussion too, and Matthew, um, again, this might be something that you've already had a uh, conversation with, but in talking with the, the children's librarian, she, I had mentioned something about the classroom doing that, and um, she she had kind of mentioned like, well, if, if they use the west door to do that and the children's library area to do that, she she would prefer, again, I, I'm kind of just relaying the message when, through conversation, but that with the classroom, I guess in certain instances she was saying that it might be detrimental to the class itself because again if she's got a locked class I guess in there um, she might not want people coming in and out or or if the door had been left unlocked or, or for some reason like that um, that again depending on I'm assuming again depending on the prices that come back for switching this hardware out that might be again in, in in talking with the staff that it might it might be worth um, the one door maybe not being dogged, but again I I'd put that up for discussion with you you know with you guys. But both both these doors exit directly into the in, into the playground area, and Saturday it was evident that you know, all those people out there I I must I must unlock <laughs> those doors about four times when I was standing out there because people wanted to go in and you know yep. I would just be I would just be in a good doobie. Yep. Yeah I, I was at a brand new school in Framingham. They had the same situation but it's a school so you can understand why they don't have this hardware and the guy just uses a tire puts it around there has a tire wrap that fits well enough that he slides it over and unlocks the door and he's got to take the tire wrap and unslide it off. At the end of the night. Well, this way you just have a, you just have your Allen wrench and yes, plug it at the end of the night. So there's really no physical change other than changing out the hardware crashed by our system. Correct. Yes. So each one of those is about a thousand bucks. Wow. We're waiting on a price, but yeah, the um, we were going to try and get away with just doing a kit, but the particular hardware doesn't have just just the the dogging kit that we can install and keep the same hardware it has to be a replacement of the entire um system it, it's also a lot cheaper mike than the uh, an earlier discussion that we had yeah, where, so, yeah. where we were going to somebody wanted to have the uh have the you know an accessible door Our reader. yeah about, or or even uh, uh you know far that. I just I, I don't know if there's any kind of indicator that could you know give us a flag that it would be easy eye candy for somebody to walk by and go that door's dog down that door's not dog. Well, but, if you look at it, you can the bow the bow. Yeah, the bow. Yeah, but I mean, it's Friday night. He's going out and he's the last. It, the alarm system should work. I agree, but you know, that's that's human potential right there. That that door's unlocked. Um, all right moving on sorry yeah i'll see i'll see too like you know if um hopefully I did, these prs were out you know i want to say about a week or two ago so um i know joe's been pushing or um joe from hutter has been you know pushing to get these prices but um so hopefully they'll be in here and, and we might be able to get these at least um the prices back maybe before that uh two-week meeting that'd be great chris thank you yep um so again, a part of this PC is the electrical is shifting an outlet on the power pole. So they installed a power pole on the kitchen um, and we asked them to shift it at a minimum three inches or equal with the outlet on the opposite side. Um, so there's enough room to properly clean under the box. It was more of a sanitation issue um, that someone couldn't fit their hand with a cloth underneath the outlet of that table. So it was kind of a, a, a discussion on, you know, if, if stuff starts building up under there and Board of Health. So we figured, well, we still have them there, you know, have them have them lift that box up. Um, and they've Chris, already, they, they Chris, already wasn't that on change order 12. 
What's that? No, no, those are the Steve. Those boxes are the ones on the wall over the over the yeah. prep sink. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, so there. okay. So yeah, there were two outlets we re relocated within the walls of the south and west walls of the kitchen. We relocated those to outside from underneath the um, shelving in the in the cabinetry. This is the one that's directly on the power pole. Uh, so uh, for uh, four add additional motion sensors or door contacts. I so I have this one on the PR, but I I know. And maybe I don't know if Joe Layden's here um, or Matthew or someone that attended the security training with PASIC. Um, I had brought it directly up to them when I was out there and they were about to do the training. Um, and it seemed like he had it handled and he was going to talk to Joe and, and, and Matthew about what they wanted about breaking the security system into two zones at the gate and then add an additional motion, sen uh, motion sensor or door contact. Because the worry again here or the idea behind this was. Um, that if if the COA door or the, the big rolling door in front of the COA reception was closed in the, the building or the library side was essentially deemed locked, that someone could potentially get through the COA reception door itself and then hop the reception counter and get into the library area while um, while the, the, the whole system was um, unarmed. So the idea was to essentially you know, switch this building into making it two zones at that door and then adding a door contact at that COA door or an additional motion sensor that would be aimed directly at that COA desk. So that way um, anyone, any kind of perpetrator that tried to get through there or anybody trying to get through there would would be picked up by one or the other. And I believe we left off with the, it. It seemed like it was a relatively easy fix um, in talking with PASIC quickly, um, but I have not gotten a price nor have I you know, I, I, I'm not sure what the de final decision was as far as motion sensor or door contact. Um, so I don't know if anybody, you know, has has an update from that, but um, that's that's that change. Um, <clears throat> life safety. Uh, I, last wasn't, change. I wasn't part. I wasn't part of that discussion in Joe's involvement in the selectmen's meeting. Now. I think it did get resolved, though. I think they they did resolve it with Joe, so I think it should be. I haven't heard anything more from it, so I'll. I'll if that follow that. To, sorry to cut you off, Chris. If the alarm no. was to go off on this, uh, well, set up by that motion sensor, is that a loud piezo or is it just going to the cops? It's going to the cops. Okay. It was yeah, it was meant to call right to the cops. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, are there any piezos or any lights that go off when the alarm system goes off? I think there's a, there's a there's a quiet well not moderate beeping from the key panel, but there's not like a big sign yeah. flashing lights or anything. Yep. Thank you. Um. Uh, so number five is you know kind of more uh, safe, life safety stuff is we added up in the mezzanine four floor, so that's the mezzanine that's above the um, kitchen. Um, there's a MAU unit up there um, and to service it, there's a very, very tight walk around area up there. Um, and in that walk around area is the attic access door. So what we had them do is we had them put down a big piece of three quarter inch plywood um, to cover the opening. So and, and it's probably pull down stair. Right, so the well, the pull down stair door opens and then there's just kind of an opening in the floor when you're up there that you can't really walk by. So this plywood would fold to cover that door whilst the um, the pull down stair door is open. So that way they, you know, have free range around that unit without having to feel like they're, you know, they could potentially fall through that hole. It's just a, an additional kind of safety fixture or cheap way to, you know, to be a little bit more safe. Um, I think I think OSHA would be interested in that also. So it's not I, I don't I don't think it's really a. It, it's not a want, it's more of a need because you, you don't want someone stepping backwards through that and dropping down and getting injured. So yeah, and they and they, they installed it um, already. And um, no, it's pretty much hinged there. Then essentially it, it, it latches. Uh, to the guard, the wood guardrails around it. So, you know, 
the 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 stair goes up that goes down and then that goes back up gets hooked with a little eye eye fish hook um to the guard and the stair can go back down so did we put some signage on it says this is not a step or can it support somebody um i i'm i'm i i would be a proponent for 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 signage because there's no real framing under that opening it's just plywood i mean it's three quarter inch plywood so it should be pretty strong but yeah you know. it should it should be able to support someone if they step on it right. by accident yep thank you uh, so the last topic of discussion is um, what we are going to do with this steep slope in the playground area um, in between the engineered wood fiber and the stone dust path that goes down around to the children's play area. Um, you can see it to the right is a picture of how it exists now. What's highlighted is um, the slope in question um to the left of the screen is a plan view of what we are planning to do which is essentially add this um vine here vinca minor um that will cover and fill in this whole entire area and then um, at the bottom we will use a drainage retention this Filtrex uh, sill sock um, to essentially hold it back um, until the Vinca takes um, takes to the to the to the to the slope. Um, and put the jute down under that too, right? The jute, yes. This is actually in the picture. You can see the jute in the background here um, that they'll be putting down. Uh, so it's really we originally had um, plantings here, uh, but they weren't lower vines and things like that. That'll actually really grab the side of, of this dirt um, and hold. So I think uh, moving this to to a, to the Vinca would would solve that issue. That's and that and that was that was the landscape architect's recommendation, correct, Chris? Correct. Well, so it was actually a he he backed the decision, but I believe the decision was made out in the field um, with 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 Peter, Libby, Paul, myself, and and Steve um, as a you know to try and aid this issue because originally too is we were looking at um, again to the edge of this engineered wood fiber is the the edge of the fall zone for the swings um, so we wanted to make sure that you know kids weren't going to launch themselves essentially off this EWF onto the stone pavement um, and try to deter them from doing that so again filling this all in with plantings um, should at least aid a little bit in that um, and then we'll see from there you know really how this kind of all sits and sticks and if there's any kind of additional measures or as sure as like a fence or something like that. Um, then I thought we were putting Holly up at the top. Yeah, at the top. So in respects to Holly, again, we got to get it. We, the Holly will grow into the fall zone. Um, so we can't really plant Holly here um, without it growing into the fall zone. Um, that think of stuff takes off big time and just grow anywhere. What's that? I said the Vinca, that's a good choice. That stuff grows really well. It'll it'll cover it in. You know, uh, I know originally again we looked at maybe doing sod. I think the, the Vinca compared yeah. to the sod is obviously, you know, a lot better looking. Um low well maintenance too. It's yeah, maintenance. exactly. So that's it, Chris. So, so, so yeah, that's so that's thing. so that's it again. And yeah, we're waiting for prices on both these last two items. So what about um, we also talk about um, using the Vinca around the perimeter of the fence behind the lower stone dust path too. Uh, we can I can certainly add add that in originally again a part of this PR too that 
um, is described more, you know, verbally. It doesn't didn't really need a graphic. Was to change the um, seating down below to either a sod or a turf. Um, so, other than that, I, I, don't, I don't remember the the vinca around the 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 west side of the children's play area, Steve. Yeah, so around the, you know, there there are a couple of trees that they planted along. Yeah. So on the outside of the trees, between the trees and the fence, we talked about uh, putting the vinca around there too, um, so that it wouldn't uh, require maintenance. That would be difficult for DPW to get to because of the trees there. Um, yeah. So we, I think, I think we would like to include that in this. Uh, PR and also on the on the, on the right yeah. on the right hand side of that hill. I mean, that's, so the, if I'm a little kid, I got to go all the way up to the top of that long trail yeah. to get to the, the swing. Yeah, thank you. Or I exit stage right and climb up that hill right there where the bank is going to be. That's so you right. What do you say, Mike? So would it make sense to possibly put no, how, how, so going up, if you're a kid, you're not going all the way to the end of that. That's why, so, that's why we're putting the vinca there to keep people off it. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, the, that's the original conversations we had. I mean, Steve and I were there and, and we were talking about a fence. And then, talked about, then the, the fence went away and I, I, I somehow the, the conversation went to uh, Holly. I believe, and just something to keep keep the kid from jumping down on it, right? Because that's that's a hell of a slope right there. Uh, the further you come towards the camera, the steeper the slope is. Sure. So where the steepest part of the slope is, I, I, I honestly, that, that's where the kid's going to cut through. Anyways, got to happen. Why don't we just provide two boulders right there that, that are more like stepping stones? They're going to cut through there anyways. You yeah, might as well give them a path. Well, the problem oh, is we don't have the stone. The stone's path has to be a certain width to be ADA compliant. Right, the stone would be tucked into that. That This would not be ADA. This would be the kids taking the shortcut. Would it be in the, the strike zone of the kid jumping off the swing, though? It's, it's the, the edge of the EWF is, is, the, is the fall zone. Yeah, you need 16 yellow line is the fall zone. Yeah. yeah, you need yeah. you need 16. But see where that you got the pointer right now? Is yeah. that continue fall zone, continue more to the right? No. The I'm saying you put two stones right there with an 18 inch separation. The kid jumps up and down there like a little kid, and they cut right through there. Either that, they're gonna blaze a path through that thing anyways. Yeah. Well, first of one of the issues was there was no stones of sufficient size there. All the stones were, were been removed from the on the site, you can make a little. I like that idea. You can make a little staircase. Just put some. Yeah. They just have to be just some things to keep them going because they're just gonna they're gonna blaze right through there. That sounds like an Eagle Scout project. Build a little staircase. We already have one Eagle Scout project over there, pal. No, Chris, I I, I appreciate all your actually. I appreciate everyone's all effort. I'm just saying, I I I, I worked to work long enough with little kids. <laughs> they got a place right through there. And, and I'll bet you told me you were a little kid once, too. No, I was not. I grew up and I was two weeks. <laughs> Chris, Chris are, you, are you coming out Thursday? Um, I don't think so. I was out there Monday. Oh, all right. right. During the morning. Um, uh, but uh, give me, what uh, what are we thinking Thursday? I was probably going to do the meeting remotely, but. Um, is All right, there a fine. I mean, um, my question was put some more eyes on that on that area. Nate, so with, um, with another idea. So Nate will be out there tomorrow. Paul, do you know what time? I don't know okay. what time you said. At some point on Wednesday, so um, I can tell you both first thing in the morning, or I can email him right now and see, um, you know, if he does have a time in mind. That way, you guys, if you guys want to go there and talk to him, you guys, you know, you guys. Yeah, can. that would be good. That, that works. Okay. That we works. Time. Okay. Dope. I like I like that idea though of some kind of a step or something. I think too, built into the slope. Even if there were granite steps, you know, like partial granite. They don't have to be full width. They just have to be 
where a little kid can kind of like the stone scramble. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and to match that stone spout, I think that would be, yeah. you know, we pick out two decent rocks that are laid flat and then give them a, a decent step and give them a place to go. Yeah. 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 Either yeah. that, they're going to pound right through that, thank you. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And the other question, Chris, um, we talked about sod maybe for the bowl. Yep. Uh, have you gotten a price for that? I haven't got a price for either one. I just revised the PR and sent it out this morning or this afternoonish. Okay. Um, what so about about using if, if sod turns out to be too much? Um, what about using vinca in the bowl? Uh, I, don't think that's, I mean, I don't think you want vinca where a place where people might we, want to sit and have. They're going to step on it. Yeah, yeah. we would. <laughs> I think you want grass there. Okay. Yeah. That's meant to be. Married. And Dennis, I talked to Dennis about sod, and he said that there's uh, a kind of sod that you can get that is both drop resistant and doesn't need to be mowed very often. I, he didn't have a name for it, but if there is a way to be specific on what kind of sod we would want to get, it would clearly be something like that. If that's an option. Clover. You can talk to me about that too. <laughs> I think clover or something like that would be a. Be an ID with some paint, you know? No clover, no seriously clover. Yeah, so again, um, yeah, I'll be a little. I can I can be a little bit more specific in in, in my message to Nate. Well, I'll maybe know. maybe we can ask Nate tomorrow if we see him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you, you can certainly I, yeah you can certainly ask him the question. He's the he'll he'll know. <laughs> Why don't you have Nate call you, Chris, when he's there, and then you can get in touch with Paul and Steve. Okay. And, yep, uh, they don't have to hang around. Yeah. 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 yeah, you should just stay with that guy and let him design it. There, uh, there was one other thing I wanted to ask. Um, um, yep. The meals, the meals guy asked for an outlet on the wall between the sink. Between I, the I've sink. had that conversation and Maggie said no. Okay. Got it. So, Chris, are you going to, can we ask your landscape architect? To actually get a price also on those, those that pathway that we just referenced to save the pickup. Yeah. 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 He can do a sketch for it to issue. Yeah, he can he can do the sketch and then Hutter is gonna yeah, unless Hutter wants to do it or if, if the town wants to do it. Um, you know, I think at this point it's it's either or. But we can certainly okay. do like Peter's saying, we can get a sketch done for you guys. That'd be great. And we I don't think we need a hand railing there. What are you guys' thoughts? Oh, yeah. Uh, as, as long as it doesn't look like steps. What do you think? Stones? I think if it's just stones. Yeah, next to the stones. I think if it's stones, it's fine. I think sometimes an, I think a handrail could be more dangerous, frankly. Kids tumbling over. And no, I just don't want to get dragged to some ADA guy gets after something. No, I think if we, if Nate designed it to look like steps, like actual steps, then you'd want a handrail. But if it's some kind of boulder thing, I don't think it's going to need a handrail. Right, and we matched that up area that we did. I think that would work. Thank you. I don't have to see that sketch. I got tons of stones and up the west front line. There's rocks in your head, too. <laughs> no, right now all, all, the, uh, all the stone was removed from that area. Yeah. I, don't know if I don't know if there's any left over the bank and by yeah, our neighbors. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. Behind here is a bunch of, bunch of stuff. All right, can we, uh, it's a corral up there. We keep this thing going. It's a hot spot. It's a hot spot and a corral up right in Upton. Okay. What's that? All right. Chris, you done? And it was so I'm all set. Okay. I'm all set. Peter, you have anything to add? Huh? Are you working this no, thank you. Uh, I'm doing uh, the substance of a house. Congratulations on the opening. Hey, hope. hey, we're out of here, please. <laughs> I'm the yellow right. I'm talking. All right, go ahead. Are you done? Did we interrupt? I'm sorry. I'm trying to get free stones. Go ahead. All right. Steve <laughs> Kirby, you're good. Chris, you're good. Peter, you're yep. good. Yep. All right. Town punch list. Steve, I haven't updated it lately, but I'll attach an update. 
Um, everybody's seen it. I mean, I think we we know we know where we are, right? The IT. Yeah, the IT stuff. Um, the only thing that's two things are remaining to be installed, which are the the cameras like that one, and the ClickShare devices, which allow you to connect your laptop to a screen. It's supposed to be installed this week. I don't know. Also, I don't know if Maggie is still here. Um, we um, he got some um, microphones, not microphones, um, devices for people with hearing aids who can hear better in the big room uh, by connecting the, the this thing that you put around your neck, like a movie theater, to the amplifier. Um, and he, the hearing he's, assist system. Yeah, it's a hearing assist device, they call it, I guess. So we'll have a couple of those too. Excellent. Uh, I'm those on myself. <laughs> All right. Then another item on the town punch list was the was the therapeutic swing. And very briefly, uh, Steve Rackerton maintained there was a always a I call it a handicap swing. It's uh, the proper nomenclature is a therapeutic swing. Uh, it was never there. Steve Kirby said there were never no pictures there in any of his drawings or his pictures. I reached out to the guy from the town that takes care of it, the recreation, and he says, "Oh yeah, there was a there was one of those swings there, and it broke some time ago, and we took it out." So <laughs> both of them are right. Uh, it was uh, an on-the-fly decision was made with, on the premise that there was there was one there at one time. So we have decided we decided to replace the replace it, and I have gotten a price from Cindy Mac to replace it, and it's uh, in the neighborhood of eighteen hundred dollars installed. And when she installs it, we it comes with the uh, with the warranty. Uh, it's a four month lead time. I have given Joe the contract or the, the link to the contract that she sent to me, so uh, it will be there. So that's that's that in a nutshell. Uh, the playground sign. Uh, I have talked with Karen Mullen from Science Plus. They wanted to come last Thursday, I believe it was, to Wednesday, last, last Tuesday they wanted to come to set the granite post. But that was the day they were doing the paving, so we had to put it off. And uh, I'm waiting now to hear from the Granite Post people as to when they want to come in and set the post. I told them, uh, give me a day's notice and I will tell them exactly where it is. The building dedication plaque is still part of the, is still part within the scope of Hutter's work. Uh, we're still waiting to hear from that from them. We have a, a a plaque that you've been told about, Jim Grosu, that is just about complete. Uh, that is donated by uh, cooperatively, I guess, Blackstone Valley Tech and Sunshine Sign. And the uh, friends of the library are in the process of getting a, a, rec a plaque to recognize John Robinson for his uh, contributions to the library. Anybody else have anything to add there? It's on my bucket list to hang the communication board. I will take care of that in the next few days. All right. And with uh, hot weather doesn't rust? Yeah, I'm hoping to try to get some tamper proof stuff so we can catch it one, one and done. All right. Uh, other topics not reasonably anticipated. It could, there well, could be a Spargo's waving his hand over there. That's all I can see his hand on the top of his head. You, you, you. There you go. There you go. Steve, I just want to say, Steve Radican, great job. Very, very difficult. Everything that he had to do on the IT side, I know. <laughs> so I just want to say, great job, Dean. Thank you. Uh, you while, while your while your camera's alive, I'm uh, Chris. Somewhere we have those. Uh, what's Qualifies as a replacement pollinator garden. I, we mentioned it. I mentioned it to you the other day. Yep. All right. So Don, you got to get your people together to come up with a sign for it. I assume. Yes. 
We wouldn't want it to magically disappear again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. Front. Yeah, that's towards the front of the building now. So all we have to do is get you the sign and we're good? I think so, yeah. You just got to get the you may want to take a, You may want to take a look at it. and uh, It's a small so area. you don't get something that's uh, too big, you know? Right. Okay. I'll take a look. Uh, Go take a look at the building. It's open. Yeah. No comments. Next meeting. When do we want to have that next meeting, Steve Kirby? A couple of weeks, you said? Two, two weeks, yeah. I know next week is 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 a difficult, so I guess it would be... uh May 16th. May 16th. May 16th, yeah. Hopefully that's not a problem, but yeah. Because well, it'll be, it'll probably just, well, I mean, it can be for anything, but it'll be certainly for invoices. Are you planning, Steve, uh, to be here Thursday at 10 o'clock or 10.30 for... Not no I no I won't be for I'll be on the I'll be there before ten thirty but then I have to leave so I'll be on remotely like I have been okay because I got I have another another job that started no there's that I, have, I have a meeting for there's some what's going this is tomorrow that is on on next Wednesday is HAC training or something like that did I am I correct there. Yeah, we were given a date, but no time. May time. I did. I did notice it several times that I've come in. I think it's the library entrance. The heat coming out of that ceiling will knock you over. So I'm more, I'm more, I'm more, con I'm more cognizant of it since now the town is paying the bill. It'll pay the bill to begin with. Uh, uh, no, the first initially it was hundreds. So is that when you're just in the vestibule alone? Yeah. Okay. There's a yeah a radiant heater. Radiant, radiant in the ceiling. And, that's and the fan comes on when the door opens? No. No, I don't think so. I think it's a no, it's, 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 it's just radiant heating. I never stood in there with the door closed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. And oh, by the way, uh, those of interest. The gentleman, or Don may be interested, the water selectman decided a week ago that when the building is closed, those bathrooms in the front will be closed. Ah. <laughs> so, got something to tell you, boys. You don't like it, get over it. You got to drive fast and go home. That's it. It's like we're not, you know, we're not ripping the building down because people don't like it. Right. All right. Anybody else have anything else here? I, I can see our our, our meetings. Uh, I mean, there, there are a few meet, there are a few in front of us. This is our get-togethers, our regular get-togethers are winding down. Most to adjourn. To adjourn at 7.19 or whatever it says on the screen. All fire the eye. He bracket tonight. He had right. Thanks all, Don Spargo, I. Thank you, gentlemen.